I learned early that the word says this. And if this does not line up with the word, it's not God. And we have too many people that have bypassed relationship to try to get into an assignment. My life is not hidden. I open it up to you. I tell you where I came from. I tell you how my relationship with God got established. That's why you see me do what I do. I don't struggle in my assignment. I don't struggle with the presence of God. I can invite Holy Spirit right now. This whole atmosphere will shift because of our relationship. I'm not waiting on somebody else to get it right before I move out in what's on my life. I'm talking about because of our relationship. See, there are a lot of things I don't know, but I know the voice of God and I know the word of God and I know how Holy Spirit moves. Most people don't know that because they have not spent enough time with him. So they got to guess in everything, second guessing themselves. Is this God? Is that the Holy Ghost? What? You shouldn't be like that. If you've been saved any length of time, if you're not a babe, you should know. It should be clear. And if you don't, that's an indication that you have not taken your prayer life serious. Okay. So, so I, I hear that. So, how, how, much, how long should you pray? Let me say this. It's not, oh God, oh, God. Got to go to work. Y'all, y'all hard tonight. I don't know what happened to you since Sunday, but uh, <laughs> y'all must have gave it all to Minister Jamel. Y'all hard. <laughs> y'all, y'all hard tonight. Because, see, then, let, let me say this, God. I, I cannot say this. You, you should, Lord have mercy. I know they're going to be like, hey, what? Let, can we just stay biblical, right? We say biblical. Jesus came to the disciples when they were in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, could you not pray one hour? One hour should be the starting point. It should max you out. Listen, listen, listen. I'm flowing with the Holy Ghost. If an hour maxes you out, that means you don't have no word. Because you're praying off the top of your head. And for a believer, now, babe, I understand. I understand they haven't developed their vocabulary. But if, if a believer been saved 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and an hour maxes out your prayer life, you don't have no word in you. Because the truth of the matter is, you should just be getting started good with an hour. Because you got to come from the outer court, the inner court, the holy place. So you got to keep working in your way in. So it's going to take you an hour to confess all them sins you did. <laughs> now, with that being said, like with that being said, because I, I don't want us to get into formulas. Yeah. I'm going to start praying an hour every day. That, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. But see, the, the manifestation of what you will walk in is not because you prayed an hour. I'm just saying you should be able to pray an hour. The, the manifestation of what you walk in is connected to you just having a prayer life. Because if you have a prayer life, your, your life, you're praying all the time. It's not just that hour. They said Smith Wigglesworth never prayed longer than 15 minutes, but he never went more than 15 minutes without praying. He would stop in the middle of a conversation and start praying. And then he'll say, now, Maurice, what did you say again? I mean, he, he never went more than 15 minutes without praying, but he never prayed more than 15 minutes. What does that mean? He had a prayer life. Yeah. See, we're trying to get into formula so much that we don't have a prayer life. Because God... Listen, the Bible says in Genesis that Enoch walked with God. It didn't, it didn't say he had a prayer life, but we know he had a prayer life to walk with God. And say, then he was not for God took him. God took him alive to heaven because God liked this company so much. What does that mean? Enoch walked with God. Enoch 
talk with God as he walked with God. Yes. Enoch was always cognizant that God is here. Yes. I don't need a formula. This is my lifestyle. Right. And when you get more into the lifestyle of prayer instead of the formula of prayer, then you will always be hearing God and know where God is and what he's doing. Because we think if we ain't been in that prayer closet for two hours, we ain't did nothing. You can be in there for three hours and come out and still can't hear God. Because you thought it was the three hours that made you hear God and not the relationship. God not into formulas, he's into surrender. And when you have submitted your life to God, you're not looking for formulas. Do you pray at night or do you pray in the morning? <laughs> See that? There you go. I pray all the time. At, late in the midnight hour, in the morning hour, in the afternoon. I, I, why? Because I'm not looking for opportunity. He's my best friend. You know that the Holy Spirit can be everybody's best friend and ain't nobody got betrayed and left out. You know that? Because if I say Brianna, my best friend, and then somebody who thought that she was their best friend, hear that, they'll get, they'll get mad. I thought you was my best friend. See, the thing about Holy Spirit, he can be all our best friend. Yeah. That's right. And not betray none of us. That's right. And it's God enough to love on all of us at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let, me, let me get it to this word, this next one. So, operate in the spirit of revelation. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Because we, see, y'all, we operate in extremes. We will go from not doing something. We'll go from zero to 100 in less than a second. We'll go from not doing nothing to doing, doing all this stuff. Because we think it's the stuff. If it's the stuff, then where does grace fit in the equation? If, it's the, if we're doing it, where is the space for grace? If I got to become so robotic that I'm doing all this stuff, then why is God even in it? Because I go from not praying to I'm in the all day praying, thinking that it's in the all day praying that's going to produce the power in my life. It's the relationship. But you still should be able to pray an hour. I ain't, I ain't forgot. <laughs> because, because, Minister Tracy, what we do, we have a prayer service, right? And then we'll get a mic to somebody and say, pray. In the first, it's show boycott. No, I don't want to hear no tongues. We want, we want to hear you pray in English. We want to hear the word prayed out. So after five minutes, they're looking for somebody else to get a mic. Why? They don't have no word. I like people, you got to pull them by the coattail and say, okay, that's enough. We let somebody else pray. I don't like people after five minutes, they're looking around. If you have exhausted your spiritual vocabulary in five minutes, you are in trouble. You're in trouble. My God, you can quote some songs and be longer than five minutes. <laughs> Okay. Y'all there in verse 17, Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's, that's story in 18. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, which are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So if you're going to operate in the supernatural, you're going to have to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, meaning that it's going to be past your own mental ability. See, some of us, oh man, this ain't going the way I thought it was going to go. Some of us are religious. I don't know no better way to say it. We're, we're mechanical. 
We're going to go pray the same way, the same stuff every day. We're mechanical. We're, we're not open for the moving of the Holy Spirit. We're not praying and the Holy Spirit tapping you say, Canada, Canada. And we're, okay, I'm going to read about Canada when I finish praying my prayer. <laughs> we're not open. What does the Holy Spirit want you to do? He wants you to pray for Canada. Yeah. I, well, I don't know. He ain't asked you to know. Well, he know what's going on. He just obey. See, that's one of the things of having a prayer life. The Holy Spirit can interrupt your prayer at any time and start telling you pray in this direction. Remember Romans 8, the spirit make of groanings. They cannot be uttered. He labano, he grabs hold and prays with us. Stuff we don't know how to pray as we ought to. That's why we become... We become programmed to pray the same way because we don't know how we pray as we ought to. But the Spirit himself make of intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. You have to partner with the Holy Spirit in order to... I'm, I'm supposed to be talking about Revelation. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you have to partner with the Holy Spirit in order to have effective prayer life. You, you see, some of y'all are rebellion against the Holy Spirit. Rebel. He, you in prayer, and he's telling you stuff. Jimmy. Jimmy. I don't know no Jimmy. And Lord, I thank you that you. <laughs> he didn't ask you if you know Jimmy. He's saying pray for Jimmy. Even though it's five ahead of him. Pray for Jimmy. See, y'all don't have no sense of humor either. The commercial, five ahead of you, Jimmy. <laughs> see, and see, this is the thing. I'm trying to get on Spirit of Wisdom Revelation. This is the thing. When, when we are so programmed, we block the Holy Spirit out. Because you're going to pray for the military, law enforcement, the hospitals, the nurses, your family, your church, your children. In the city, and the president, is, hopefully you pray for people in authority. And that's it. But the Holy Spirit is saying the subway. And you're like, I don't want no subway sandwich today. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit say the subway. And then a week later, it was a bomb attempt at the subway. And you're like, oh, that's what the whole. See, when you become programmed, you're not open for the Holy Spirit to speak to you in prayer. You, you cannot become so programmed that you don't give the intercessor, because see, you're not no intercessor. That's an insult. Y'all going to take me there. Lord, just have your way, God. Romans 8, have your way, Holy Ghost. I got, they from the show mistake. I got to show them. You're not no intercessor. I'm an intercessor. Matter of fact, I'm the head intercessor. <laughs> Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for. <laughs> he just said, You don't know what to pray for. We do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. He who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he intercedes for for the holy ones, according to the will of God, the holy ones are the saints. Yes. Yes. He just said, you not no intercede. <laughs> you don't even know how to pray. They offended, Lord. <laughs> I didn't say it. I, argue, with the, argue with Paul. He wrote Romans. Is that not what the word said? He said, we don't even know how to pray. As we ought to. Yeah. But the Spirit Himself yeah. make of intercession yes. with groanings that cannot be uttered. Yeah. He praying for the saints. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh man, you know, because people say, Jesus is in heaven interceding for us. No, He ain't. You gotta learn the word. It says He forever liveth to make intercession for the saints. 
This is how he intercedes for the saints, through the saints. That's why we have to yield to Holy Spirit so he can intercede properly. Now, I wasn't even going here. The Holy Spirit say, go there, bust them up, bust them up. He, now, you, now, I'm not saying you don't intercede, but you're not no intercessor. He the intercessor. Because you don't know how to pray as you ought to. None of us do. But he reveals stuff to us in prayer. So if you're not in partnership with the Holy Spirit, what are you praying? You mechanical. And that's why you dry and ashy. Because the spirit give us life. The letter, the literal killer, but the spirit make up a lot. See, you don't have no spirit in your prayer. You just got mechanics. Oh, I'm, I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm not trying to offend nobody. You have become robotical. You're not open for the spirit. Because you already know you're going to pray your paper. You're going to read out of your book of prayers every day. And so there is no room for the Holy Spirit to tap you on your shoulder and say the right family. And you're going to call him and say, y'all want to go out to eat? He ain't saying invite them. Well, he might be saying invite them out. But he's telling you to intercede right now. You ain't got to know everything. I've been in prayer and the Lord dropped y'all name in my spirit. I ain't say let me call and signify. I obey the Lord. And then I said, I was praying for you. Well, let me tell you what was going on. So that was the Lord had you praying. What if I would say, no, I'm going to pray my prayer. Mechanical. You know why that's easy? Because you have to be stretched to pray in the spirit and with the spirit. It stretches your womb. This is this is Lord. Oh, that's Minister Jamea area. I'm trying not to uh, I'll try not to get into it. It stretches you to pray in the spirit. Because it's gonna force your behind to get in the word and to pray word-based prayers, and then to shut down some stuff so you can be open to hear the spirit, and then you flow with the spirit in prayer. Do y'all realize we started the church a month after 9-11? A month. When everybody was counseling, they, so it was other churches that was going to start, they counseled it. They said, it's too much going on. And the Holy Spirit said, start your church. Start your church. A month. But two weeks before 9-11, I was having dreams about airplanes crashing in the buildings, the military being deployed, Airports locked down, states locked down, and I was telling my wife, telling my family, telling people at the church I was on staff at, I was like, I'm having this dream, y'all. I said, I don't know what to do with it, and I'm having it more than one night. And so we were in, in um, prayer at the church, and uh, so the staff prayer, we were just lifting it up in prayer, because we didn't know what else to do with it. And so I'm in my office at the church working, and somebody ran in there and said, Pastor Jeff, you got to come and see this. And so on the big screen at the church, it was, the TV was on, and they kept showing the airplane going into the building. And they say, this is exactly what you saw. They say, this is what you saw, what you told us you saw weeks ago, and we've been praying. Well, what was happening? The Lord was communicating with my spirit when I was asleep. So when I got, got up, I knew how to pray. Now, I didn't stop it, but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Because we even know that they were headed to the Pentagon. It's other stuff that was supposed to happen. So just because you pray don't mean it stopped. It might mean it minimized it. And so what I'm trying to say is that when you become prayer, you don't have to be on your knees for God to speak to you. God will speak in your dreams. He'll speak on your job. He'll speak on the highway while you're driving. 
he will speak as long as you are open to listen. And so I do not limit my hearing God to my prayer time. I give God permission to speak to me anywhere and any time. But if you box your ability to hear God into a, a time span, then you will be limited in what you hear. And you'll be limited how you hear. I'll just go into prayer to hear God. Well, no, you, you don't really go into prayer to hear God from, from that standpoint. He'll speak in prayer. But you go in prayer to declare God's will in the earth. You go in prayer for legislative purposes. Oh, God. Do, do you realize we're supposed to legislate in the earth? We're kingdom, right? We're, so, we're supposed to legislate God's kingdom will in the earth. You do that in prayer. God speaks. But God should be able to speak to you at Starbucks having a latte. When you, when you walk with God, God is not limited to religion and to formulas. There's too many people trying to get the scoop on formulas and how people do stuff. And when God just wants you to yield, God wants your availability. Well, you telling me I ain't got to go home and be? No, go be with the Lord. But don't limit him to your closet or your bathroom or your living room, wherever you go into your place of prayer. Don't limit him to that. Let him know that your spirit is primed and you're ready to hear him anywhere and anytime he speaks. Because sometimes God needs to get something to you and you don't have time to go to your secret place. He need to tell you your child in trouble right now. I remember we were in uh, Durham at a double portion conference. And we were up there and we, we were uh, praying. And it's like my wife had a vision of a dog shadow. I think it was going toward Minister Jamel. He was a little boy then. And so we called back to Charlotte to check on our sons, and they were rushing him to the hospital. He had got sick. But the, the Lord allowed her to see the spirit in Durham that was attacking his body. So we were able to go into prayer and counsel the assignment of the enemy. You have to be open whenever. However, if he give you a vision, if he give you a dream, if he speak in your spirit, if he speak through the word, however he communicates, you got to be open. And none of that had nothing to do with revelation. I promise you I'll get back on that revelation. But right now you need to hear God. See, you petting yourself on the back because you pray and that's great. But do you hear? Because if I'm praying and I'm not hearing, then it's just a dialogue. A monologue, I'm sorry. It's a monologue, it's not a dialogue. Because God wants to speak. So how many people are going into prayer and they never hear God? Whether it's in prayer or during the day or in they drink, whatever, they don't hear God. Okay, I'm, I'm, did I help y'all tonight? I, I felt like I was I was meddling. I, I felt like I was I, I, I'm trying to teach y'all walk in the supernatural. Praise the Lord, it's 8 o'clock. It's kingdom investment time, amen? amen? Praise the Lord. I'll do better next week. <laughs> I'll do better next week, I promise. Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www.wordlifecenter.org. Or you may also send a seed offering to Post Office Box 293, Kannapolis, North Carolina, 28082. 
The word of God says, give and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International. But early fathers said that he is convinced that God does nothing until men pray. So if, if what God desires to do in the earth is dependent upon your prayer life, would it happen? Don't answer that. Just think about it. If it was dependent upon your prayer life, would it happen? If this next move of God that is hitting the earth right now was dependent on the church prayer, would it happen? Just something to think about. Listen to this. Prayer connected Jesus directly to the power and the authority. Prayer connected Jesus to the power and the authority. I am convinced that if Jesus did not pray, he would not have walked in that power and that authority. And so if prayer connected Jesus to power and authority, what about us? Why are we wishing for stuff that we will not contend for in prayer? From the author of Occupy comes a new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.